I'm Amy Jo Martin, founder and CEO of Digital Royalty. I'm also your renegade instructor for today. I was born a renegade. Clearly, my parents were also renegades, based on this haircut I sported when I was younger. What is that flip thing, anyway? When I was a child, I would run away daily. The genesis of these frequent escapades was my addiction to curiosity. Like clockwork, I would eventually get hungry and disenchanted and head back home around dusk. I would start all over again the next day because I knew there was something undiscovered out there, and I wanted to be the one to discover it and share. An odd fact about me is that I don't use emoticons. Yep, those smiley little faces made out of text characters. Those are emoticons, and I gave them up in October of 2010 because I believe people need to use their words. Emoticons tend to make people lazy, and we need to communicate in a more custom way. So I'm emoticon free. It's been two years, and I'm pretty proud of that. Another random fact is that I have a love affair going on with candy corn. That's something else I should probably be giving up, but uh, I digress. So let's get started. I've been sharing the digital royalty journey for the past four years, play by play, via my own Twitter account. Team Renegades are more than a million strong now, and you can use the hashtag Team Renegades all along the journey that you take today, and we can communicate there in the same place. First, some quick background on digital royalty. In 2009, I started the company and Shaquille O'Neal was our first client. I had previously worked for the Phoenix Suns as their director of digital media and research. Soon after, my team and I developed the ROI measurement formula. ROI standing for return on influence. It's a new way of measuring social media, both reach and frequency and old school metrics mixed in with the new school metrics, which we call warm metrics. We'll talk a little bit about that later. Later after that, Nine of 10 worldwide trending topics on Twitter were digital royalty clients one evening. This speaks to the amount of influence that our clients and the brands that we work with have. By 2011, we had 15 employees at digital royalty, servicing them from strategy to education, implementation, measurement, and activation. Early 2011, Digital Royalty University was established This is the education division of our agency. Soon after, I spoke at TEDx and explained a little bit more about the why and why people do what they do and how it's relative to social media. Our core values were then established in December of 2011. And soon after, we developed the RevPath formula, which stands for Revenue Per Available Fan and Follower. This was our way of explaining and proving that social media can be monetized. In 2012, Tony Shea, the CEO of Zappos, and Baron Davis, the point guard for the New York Knicks and the NBA, invested in our company and became our partners. We moved the headquarters to Las Vegas, and we now reside in downtown Las Vegas as a part of the revitalization project for downtown. I recently wrote my first book, called Renegades Write the Rules, which was released at the same time that we launched this e-learning platform for Digital Royalty University. It is because of our experience working with top brands, celebrities, sports teams, and leagues that we've been able to develop social media strategies, and as a result, we've experienced case studies that we'll share in this class and in others. Renegades tend to experiment and fail early, so when everyone else jumps on the bandwagon, their best practices are being polished while others are just starting the process. So please allow us to share our lessons so you can leapfrog our mistakes. Today, Digital Royalty is committed to using our influence to make the world a better place by accelerating learning, innovation, social serendipity, and community growth. We do this by empowering people to reach their royal bliss. Where passion, purpose, and skill collide, royal bliss resides. Because you're here today, a teacher will be receiving a class on social media through our Buy One, Give One program. The education the teacher receives will allow them to bridge the gap between parents, teachers, and students through social media. This collision of passion, purpose, and skill colliding is our royal bliss at Digital Royalty. The eight royal rules of social media will provide you with a sure foundation to know what to expect and how to approach the world of social media. 
Once you've concluded this session, you will have identified your audience, defined your values, and locked in your personal and business brand strategy. To top it all off, the entire time you'll be working toward identifying your very own royal bliss. If you have a burning question that hits you after our time is up, ask us at any time or in any place by using the hashtag RoyalQ. We're about to get rocking and rolling. As we move through part one of our eight royal rules, we want you to keep in mind that most of these case studies were from clients of ours and their success has much to do with the fact that they were all renegades in their own right. Hat tip to them. Eight royal rules. Throughout this class, we will be using the eight royal rules as a roadmap to help you unleash your own inner renegade and fine tune your overall approach to social media. Everyone says to us, I want more followers on Twitter or likes on Facebook. Let these eight royal rules serve as your GPS as you navigate through this new social media frontier and increase your influence. We've already tested these out. Number one, be the media. Number two, show some skin. Number three, unmask your motives. Number four, get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Number five, Ask forgiveness rather than permission. Number six, consensus is the true authority. Number seven, there's a new ROI in town. And number eight, the act of good can be scaled. Innovation allergies. Renegades are always going to be faced with adversity and skepticism. We call these innovation allergies. An example would be when someone says, well, that's not the way we've always done it. What if it doesn't work? With change comes hesitations. Social media is an equal opportunity space that moves quickly. You can't follow the rules you used to follow. You're not as safe as you used to be. And at the same time, the opportunities are much larger, much trickier, and moving much faster. Higher risk, higher payout, right? So get out that allergy medicine and kill these allergies. Lack of skill, loss of control, vulnerability, change, rejection, delegation, new metrics, and self-sacrifice. Eight royal rules. Rule number one, be the media. Innovation allergy, lack of skill. (coughs) Have you ever thought of yourself as someone who could deliver value to friends and family, your school or work? How about the world? Social media revolves around this concept. The golden rule for social media is to deliver value when, where, and how your audience wants to receive it. Social media is simply communication, more like the telephone and less like the TV. Would a business ignore a ringing phone? Would you ignore a call from a family member or friend? Okay, maybe you would, but you get the point here. Platforms such as Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Google Plus give you and everyone else a voice. They're the ultimate equalizer. Everyone is a little uncomfortable in the beginning and deals with these innovation allergies. Maybe you even feel itchy just thinking about it. But like anything, you can overcome this by practicing and experimenting. The magical part about social media is that value rises to the top. So no matter who you are or where you're from, you can be heard, seen, or retweeted within minutes if your message is engaging enough. Even more magic happens when you realize that social media platforms are just another communication tool. It's about forming real relationships first and then really communicating when you become your own media. So simply put, social media is about delivering value when, where, and how your audience wants to receive it. Case study number one. So it's storytelling time. Shaquille O'Neal isn't just a basketball legend. He isn't just a really tall guy with mad rebounding skills or a genie in a bottle who will live forever on the silver screen. Kazam, anyone? (laughs) He happens to be one of the most successful social media case studies because of his intuition, strategy, ability to take risks, and zero ability to fake anything. He knows that fans connect with him first and foremost because he offers value. Often it's value in the form of entertainment, but sometimes it's sharing breaking news, motivational content, or you name it. He understands the relationship he has with followers. When I was at the Phoenix Suns, I worked with Shaquille and several other players to help them get into social media. My boss called me a renegade one day on the team plane after a little incident, so I decided to set out on my own. 
I launched Digital Royalty, which Shaquille actually helped me name the company. He became my first client. He was a big client, literally. And together we created an unmatched synergy that sent Shaquille into media outlets and into trending topics on Twitter. It was because of concepts like random acts of Shackness that allowed him to grow his influence. So the story goes down like this. One day I gave Shaquille a call. I let him know that there were many fans that weren't quite sure if it was him behind those tweets. They thought possibly I was, do I was doing the tweeting and uh, shacketeering behind the scenes like a puppet, when actually it was purely him. Uh, so we decided to bridge the virtual world with the physical world, and I gave him the idea of random acts of shackness and literally standing on a street corner and tweeting his whereabouts. This allowed fans to truly understand that he was the person behind these tweets. We were exposing the Shaquille behind the shack. So he proceeds to tweet his exact location and tells fans that the first person to tag him gets tickets to the game the next night. It was a great success. Our experiments led to best practice. We basically polished this each time and realized what fans really wanted. They wanted to connect. We'd record live video of this taking place where hundreds of fans would come running towards Shaquille within minutes. The media would even show up. And then we'd repurpose the video to his fans and followers on Facebook and Twitter so they could actually see what was going on and they felt like they were there. This was one form of random act of shackness. Other times he would call fans, we'd record it and share it with uh, his Twitter followers and, and Facebook fans. In other cases, he would buy fans lunch and show up uh, wherever they were. So this was bridging the virtual world with the physical world to really expose the person behind the personality. Another monumental case study developed when Shaquille announced his retirement from the NBA on Twitter. He sent this tweet and shared this video that said it all. We did it. 19 years, baby. I want to thank you very much. That's why I'm telling you first. I'm about to retire. Love you. Talk to you soon. Shaq Retires became a worldwide trending topic within minutes, and the mainstream media picked it up afterward. Shaquille became the media that day. He took the me out of media. And you can too. So you might be thinking, I'm not Shaquille O'Neal. How is this relevant to me? You may not have the same amount of celebrity influence that Shaquille has, but you can certainly apply the same innovative approach that Shaquille has to your own voice. This is the equal opportunity space, and you have an open invite to join the conversation and be heard. Royal Rule Breaker, LeBron James. You have to spend time developing relationships and loyalty with your audience. The decision made for good ratings. It even raised more than $2 million for the Boys and Girls Club of America, and that's a great thing. But what was the residue left behind after LeBron James's one-hour ESPN special hailed as the decision when he announced that he was leaving the Cleveland Cavaliers to join the Miami Heat? Maybe Dallas Mavericks outspoken owner Mark Cuban summed it up best when he was quoted in an interview saying, I think he just got bad advice. Days prior to the day of the decision date, LeBron told the world he was going to be the media. He was going to own his voice and leapfrog the media. He invited everyone to sign up for his e-newsletter and follow the brand new Twitter account, which had yet to be used. We would be the first to hear. He promised us. I was one of millions who waited with bated breath to hear the decision. Someone in his camp had the right idea. He was going to deliver value when, where, and how his fans wanted to receive it. Long story short, it didn't happen. He was there for the wrong reasons. You have to earn the right to be your own media, pay your dues. The decision was ultimately an old school PR stunt that controlled a message for the wrong reason. The decision, the actual decision, was certainly LeBron's to make. But what would have been the effect if instead of keeping everyone in the dark until the grandiose announcement, he engaged his fans in conversation about the decision? What if he had even asked their opinions and then let people who ultimately determine the value of his brand be privy to this decision before anyone else, like he promised? I'm not suggesting he should have taken a poll and moved wherever the majority of his followers told him to go. I'm merely suggesting 
you know, I'm actually stating that the result of the decision would have turned out quite differently if he'd taken the time to give his followers a little more access. Who knows? The majority may have sympathized with the choice he had to make. You have to earn the right to be the media. Pay your dues. Rule number two, show some skin. Innovation allergy, loss of control. Showing skin never really gives a comfortable feeling. Well, for most people, that is. I do live in Las Vegas, so I know that that doesn't apply to everyone. But in the world of social, it oftentimes signals a loss of control allergy. Don't sweat it. We already have many times, and we're here to tell you, That although putting yourself out there is a scary thing, like anything, it gets easier with a little bit of practice. Believe it or not, this rule is number two because it propels the inner renegade inside of you. If it were easy, everyone would do it. One of the first excuses I hear from people is that they don't want to embrace social media because they don't want everything about their personal lives to be out there on the interwebs. Well, this isn't paparazzi. We have full control over what we share and what we don't share. Also, it's 2012, and it's nearly impossible to fully separate our personal and professional lives. We believe in work-life integration versus separation. Branch out. Start sharing content on those platforms that you've been desiring to test drive and experiment with. Some of the key tips we recommend is that you remain human. Humans connect with humans, not logos. So be authentic and share content that you would want to engage with. Humanization leads to monetization. Just as you might press zero a million times to bypass the automated system on the other end of the phone, people don't want to talk to a robot. They want you. So on this journey to show some skin, think outside the box, be bold, deliver value, build trust, build loyalty, and bear those shoulders. Give a little wink to the world. case study. There was one moment when a client of ours, UFC owner Dana White, accidentally tweeted out his phone number to 4.3 million combined Facebook and Twitter fans and followers. Since you can't permanently delete tweets, he decided to own it. And this serendipitous event turned into one of the best communication case studies we've seen in years. Based on how well-received this so-called mistake was, Digital Royalty suggested to Dana that we create a fan phone for him, where he would intentionally tweet his phone number before events and invite fans to call in on his fan phone. Dana would answer calls for up to an hour and discuss upcoming events and topics with the fan on the other end of the phone. This engaged fans and encouraged them to tune in or buy the pay-per-view. So, uh, you know, every time before a fight, I always tweet the celebs and uh, ask them what the picks are. And people get in here and start bitching, ask us, ask us, don't ask the celebrities. So, I, even better than that, what I want to do is, I want you to call me. I, I created a fan phone now. I want you to call me and tell me what your picks are. And I'm about to tweet the number right now. You know me. I like my flip phones. So this is the new fan phone right here. Oops, this tweet contains, may contain personal information, which may be posted on your public timeline. I want to do that when I gave out my number the other time. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Continue. Okay, what time is it now? 8.21. 8.22? Okay, sent at 8.22. Chris, where are you calling from? From L.A.? You calling from the U.K.? All right, what's your name? Greg, where are you calling from? Kansas? All right, brother. Thanks for the support, man. Thanks for following me on Twitter. Who's this? All right, Mike. Where are you calling from? El Paso, Texas. You're in the theater? Oh, that's awesome, man. All right, talk to me. We turned the social media mistake into a revenue generating opportunity by including a marketing partner, Boost Mobile. This concept provided scalability for the brand and gave access to people who wouldn't have otherwise been able to connect with Dana White or the fighters. It was bold. It brought Dana and the UFC down to a human, relatable level. And by doing so, it created a deep loyalty with their brand. If there were a king of renegades, Dana would be at the helm. Royal Rule Breaker. 
Roger Goodell. NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell is a good example for this category. He built a following not really believing in social media, which is a nice way to say he was playing not to lose versus playing to win. He had people on his staff tweeting for him. There was little, if any, connection with his followers. They stuck around largely in hopes of getting a scrap of information from his poker face tweets. There was little personality beyond what anyone could muster from the scripted media clips and newspaper quotes. Then the looming 2010 NFL lockout situation heated up, and Goodell's account went dark. He was completely missing for months, hiding in his Twitter closet. What he didn't consider is that Twitter closets have transparent doors, and that he was saying much more with his silence than he ever could with those scripted tweets. And what message did Goodell's sudden silence send? It sent the signal that his following wasn't very important to him in the first place. He'd taken the stage, dimmed the lights, and then turned his back on the audience. The question is, was Goodell really better off staying away from social media in the first place? Or did he just mishandle a golden opportunity to build trust and loyalty for his brand at the time when his audience was hanging on his every word? The answer is clear. You definitely don't say it best when you say nothing at all. Humans make mistakes. It's going to happen. Yet, you're going to be more forgivable if you have a relationship with your audience and people feel like they know you. Rule number three, unmask your motives. Innovation allergy, vulnerability. (laughs) Intent is one of the most telling pillars for any brand using social media as a communication tool. Of course, you'll feel vulnerable. But this leads to taking risks, and we all know we've got to take a good old-fashioned leap off the high board if we ever want to make a splash. People want to connect with you, the human that makes up the brand, or the company. Give that to them. Ensure that your intent is clear, put on that swim cap, and get busy. We have identified our own process of innovation at Digital Royalty, and it all starts with intent. Then, you have to have an idea. But everyone has ideas. You need influence to give your idea exposure. Once it's exposed, you must inspire people to embrace your idea. What's in it for them? You've not truly innovated until the masses have adopted your idea. Coming back to our big buddy, Shaquille O'Neal, his intent was always crystal clear. 70% of the time, he's making people laugh. 20% of the time, he's inspiring them, and he'll be completely honest and admit the remaining 10% is him trying to sell you something, and most of the time, though, that's done with humor involved. His followers know what to expect, and through that consistency, he's developed a real relationship with fans. He has earned the right to pitch them these ideas. Thought leader Simon Sinek coined the phrase that people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. So the goal is not to sell to people what you have. The goal is to connect with people who believe what you believe. Social media is powerful because it is a great tool for exposing and sharing your intent, why you do what you do. Additionally, it allows you to effectively and conveniently connect with like-minded people who believe what you believe. If you don't know why you do what you do, how do you expect anyone to follow you or ever purchase anything from you? Think about it like this. This is the equal opportunity space, and it's about playing to win versus playing not to lose. So what's your intent? Case study, Tony Shea, Zappos.com CEO. Many brands break into the social space using Twitter accounts as channels for customer relationship management and customer support, managing upset or happy customers in near real time. This may be your best first play. Tony Shea, CEO of Zappos, is a classic example. He humanized Zappos through social media by leading with accountability when mistakes were made with online orders. Zappos has effectively extended its brand promise of stellar customer service into connections between customers and employees who solve their problems in real time. You've got a problem? They'll fix it right here, right now, and via a real live person. These connections give customers a form for providing feedback, when, where, and how they want to share it. Next to a face-to-face interaction, it is the most tangible way to turn negative experiences around and amplify positive experiences, which both have an impact on the bottom line. 
key takeaway? Because Zappos.com and Tony have spent 12 years focused on building strong relationships with their customers, they were able to survive something that could have potentially damaged their brand big time. When 24 million customer accounts were compromised by hackers. The incident was revealed through a tweet sent out by Tony's Zappos Twitter account, as well as the company blog. But really, exposing yourself through social media need not be accompanied by flares or fireworks. You don't have to release a sex tape or offer a scandalous dig on somebody famous. Just be your royal self and it will all come together. Royal Rule Breaker, Chrysler Autos. Chrysler Auto learned a lesson the hard way when the following tweet was posted by an individual managing their Twitter account. Given Chrysler is a Detroit-based car company, you can imagine the repercussions of those 140 characters. Um, yeah. The individual who made this Twitter blunder worked for the agency at the time and has since been fired. Shocking. What Chrysler did do, though, is expose the fact that human interaction and their customer relationships definitely aren't in the forefront of their strategy. Rule number four, get comfortable being uncomfortable. Innovation allergy, change. The exciting part of social media is the daily opportunities we have to get comfortable being uncomfortable. Who is your audience? Who is your brand? It's a task in and of itself to figure that out. When we work with celebrities or brands, one of the first things we do is identify their audience so they can better understand who they will be talking to. Second, we look to see where their value resides. Which audience likes to hear about which topics? It's an ongoing approach and listening is key. Along with listening comes the talking, which means that you should develop your own voice. When you read a book, you can get a fairly good impression of what the character sounds like. Although less literal, your social media voice should maintain similar style and tone in order for fans and followers to appreciate and look forward to the next thing you're going to say. Consistency is key. Case study. Dwayne The Rock Johnson is a great case study relative to taking risks and knowing his audience. Last year, Dwayne Johnson offered fans anywhere in the world the opportunity to tweet him a message, and for 30 minutes, he would personally answer every question he could. The first ever half hour hashtag rock talk garnered 13,800 mentions of At The Rock on Twitter, an average of 460 mentions per minute. During that time, DJ added approximately 9,400 new followers. Even more astounding was that Rock Talk, the hashtag, became the number one worldwide trending topic within minutes, meaning that the term is one of the most populated and popular terms on Twitter. The hashtag remained on the top 10 list for 45 minutes. Advertisers pay more than $120,000 to have their product brand or campaign on the trending topic list for 24 hours at a time. DJ didn't pay anything. He knew where his audience was, what made them tick, and subsequently how to best reach them. Through social media, his brand and message rose straight to the top. Royal Rule Breaker, McDonald's. As I mentioned, it always comes down to intent and knowing your audience well. McDonald's launched a Twitter campaign called McD Stories, hoping it would inspire heartfelt stories from customers. They even invested in Twitter promoted products to further leverage the campaign and bring additional exposure. The outcome? A hashtag campaign turned into what the media called a bash tag campaign. The crowdsourcing campaign backfired with tweets from disgruntled employees and customers. The lesson learned, crowdsourcing exposes the good, the bad, and the ugly, whether you like it or not, and it's hard to control. With that said, they can be hugely successful if your intent and value are in check. Be prepared to be exposed. Thank you for taking part one of the eight royal rules of social media. For part two, please head to digitalroyaltyuniversity.com. With the purchase of each class, we are giving back a class to teachers. The benefit is going to Teach for America. Here's a message from Victor Wakefield, an executive director at Teach for America, explaining our buy one, give one program.
My name is Victor Wakefield. I'm the executive director of Teach for America in the Las Vegas Valley. I mean, at Teach for America, our mission is to partner with communities to close the academic achievement gap. The way that we do this is we um, recruit and select excellent leaders to teach in low-income schools and then give them intensive training and support to become excellent with their kids so that they'll go above and beyond traditional expectations for their students. Today there are over 10,000 core members, which is what we call our teachers in their first or second year, um, teaching in classrooms in 46 regions across the country. There's not a more important place to do this work um, for Teach for America right now than in the Las Vegas Valley. Um, and actually if you look at our city, um, around downtown it's actually one of the areas that's most disadvantaged when it comes to education. Um, from graduation rates that have actually hovered near the 50% mark in the past few years, um, all the way through a lack of early childhood options and um, even preparing our kids for college, we really struggle when it comes to education here. So it's really important that we can get community-wide effort to improve outcomes for our lowest income kids and also just to increase educational outcomes for kids all over the Las Vegas Valley. I'm seeing all the time in our classrooms that our teachers are naturally using technology to push their education forward and also you know blended learning is a big piece of you know the future of education so I think there's a very natural place where social media is going to become a great tool in the toolbox of every educator um, and I think figuring out a way for teachers and for schools and for parents to become very adept at all the positive um, aspects of social media and also to be able to really connect a whole community together is just a wonderful addition to you know any teacher's toolbox and to their repertoire so I, I think it's just uh, absolutely absolute absolutely aligned with the direction we're seeing in education today. One of the other ideas that I think um, we'll see come out of you know, the, the Digital Royalty University partnership with Teach for America is just a, a, a use of social media and, and communication that, is, that spans way beyond just an individual classroom, too. I can just imagine a principal who becomes really adept with social media that can you know, communicate with, with hundreds of parents at the same time, can celebrate the successes of, of great student um, achievement in the school, or maybe potentially bring um, uh, increase attendance at things like family nights or sporting events or back to school fairs. And I just think that there's so much potential there from a leadership standpoint for a principal, for a teacher, for a parent to become more connected using social media. I'm very excited about the Buy One Give One program. I think it's great that for every digital royalty student that purchases a class, that you're then going to actually give a this give a class to a teacher who's teaching in a public school. Um, and by focusing on Teach for America teachers, you're actually starting with teachers who are, who are teaching in a low-income school first. And so that means that for early childhood teachers through, all the way through 12th grade, that means that there are going to be teachers who are given this content to be even more successful in their classroom every time that somebody purchases a class from Digital Royalty University. I think that's a really great model for th philanthropy and a chance for every single person to be able to give back to a school. So I think that's a pretty cool model and we're really appreciative to be sort of a partner early on with you guys.